Okay, so tell us why you're making this tape. Well, um, my mother passed away a couple of months ago, and I thought this would be a nice opportunity for me to record my reminiscences of my mother, in fact, both my mother and father, um, and to record some of my earliest memories of, of my parents and uh, what we went through in the war, my school days, and uh, our decision to immigrate to Canada, to leave our homeland, and to try and start a new life with a family, and how we assimilated into Canada. So, to start off, I'd like to give you and uh, deal with the earliest memory that I personally have, and it was uh, at the age of about three and a half, and it was the winter between 1944 and 1945. And it was a time of extreme hunger for uh, Dutch people, because the Germans had starved and cut off supplies uh, to the northwestern part of Holland where we lived in Amsterdam. So, um, times were tough, there were ration coupons, um, and I recall, that I think it was three years and about seven or eight months, we went to a local school on the Shackleton Street in Amsterdam uh, with a, with a uh, wheelbarrow that my father had made for me. And I was accompanied, or rather, I accompanied my mother and uh, my young brother Robert, who uh, was a year and a half younger, came along. One thing I recall, two things I recall. One was that I had a flute which belonged to a friend of my father's, uh, which I lost along the way, and it was uh, very uh, troublesome uh, when I got back home and told my father uh, that I had lost it. Uh, the second thing I remember is going to that school to present the food coupons and getting our rations and putting them in the wheelbarrow and then walking back home. It was about two blocks. So that was my earliest memory. Uh, a few months later, in September of 1945, I uh, began what we call Pleuterschool, or the preschool, which uh, I attended for two years. And it was located about four blocks from my home. The principal or headmistress's name was uh, Jufra de Witt, or Miss de Witt. And um, my brother Robert um, was in the play school too, I think the year after I wa was. And looking back on some of the photographs of both uh, he and I at that school, uh, we were the only ones with our hair neatly combed and we both had a jacket and tie on. The only ones. And it just reminded me that my mother, and in fact my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, always uh, had a saying that if you look good, you feel good about yourself, and, you, and you'll do very, very well in life. And uh, my mother, right to the very end, always wanted to look good, and uh, it, uh, I was the ben beneficiary of, of that uh, installation of, uh, of a fashion. And uh, to this day, I, uh, I'd like to look good and uh, have my hair neatly combed, except when I'm at home. So, um, two years after that, I started normal school, which was a, a, about two or three blocks further, but still within walking distance of, of where we lived. And uh, at that school, I went from grades one to four, and I remember my teacher in grade one and two was Mr. Van der Hoove, and the teacher in grade three and four was Juffrouw, or Miss Hayama. And uh, I was always um, a very good student, and I got a good report card. Uh, which reminds me of another story that my mother, right as le recently as last Christmas, uh, recounted to me, and that was uh, my friend across the street, Corey Brand, uh, was in the same grade as I was, but his report card wasn't nearly as good as mine. So Mrs. Brand went to complain to the teacher and suggested that she was spending too much time with little Johnny Sturk and uh, wasn't spending enough time with her son. Um, well, the teacher made short shrift of that, and uh, um, but my mother retained that story to the end of her life, you know. So um, that was very nice. Uh, I also got a bicycle at, uh, when I was in grade two, I think. I was eight years old and uh, cycled, learned how to ride it. My dad had put blocks on the, uh, on the pedals so I could reach them um, and for a few months until I was able to reach them. And I recall one Sunday morning, I decided to go for a little ride, and it was 9, 9.30 in the morning. And I told my parents, I'm going to go for a bike ride. And I thought to myself, okay, I got to the edge of Amsterdam. Um, why don't I go a little bit further to the west, to a little town called Holofe, which means halfway. Uh, halfway to what, you might wonder, but 
it was halfway to Harlem, the city of Harlem. Well, I got to uh, Hollowell, and it didn't take me very long. Holland was flat, and it was a one-speed bike, but I had no trouble. So I decided to go on to Harlem. Here I was, eight years old, and I cycled all the way through Harlem, and decided to keep going right to the beach at the North Sea, at Zandvoort, where our neighbors had a, had a tent cabin. Uh, I knew exactly where they were because we had visited them before, and uh, I spent the whole day with them. Didn't have a bathing suit, but I went in the ocean in my undershorts and stepped on a jellyfish, I recall that, and got home about 8.30 at night. Well, my father was beside himself with worry, and um, I got supreme um, health, you might, yeah, you might say, um, but I never recall him chastising me uh, with his fists. Uh, it was always done nicely. Um, the war um, was a very difficult time for my parents. Um, just to harken back for a few moments, um, the neighbor down below who was a tailor uh, and my father bought a, a round Dutch cheese and a bottle of wine and they hid it in the attic and swore to each other after the war, we're going to sit down and uh, eat the cheese and drink the wine. And you know what? They did. 